Hey guys, welcome back to another watch review. Today we'll be over the Courgette Railmaster homage um, from Omega. So let's just get down to the basics. Um, so the brand is Courgette or Courgeot. Don't know how to pronounce it exactly. Um, the model, no specific model name or number, so we're just going to say the Omega Railmaster. Um, the movement is automatic movement. Uh, this particular watch that you're looking at right now has a Siegel 1612 movement, but um, there's two options. There's a Miota 8212 and then a Siegel 1612, so there you go there for that. Um, as far as a dial, this is the black version. There's three different colors. There's black, blue, and white. And there's also another variation as far as dials. There's a branded dial, which is what you see right in front of you with the logo. And then it's got um, the water resistance and it's got self-winding on the bottom. So there's the branded dial and then there's a sterile dial. Sterile dial uh, will not have the... Uh, logo uh, for the brand and then it won't have the information on the bottom about the movement and the water resistance um, and as far as the hands go uh, you've got a lollipop seconds hand um, and then the minute and the hour it's just a standard straight I guess non arrow nothing really too special I guess you can say about uh, those hands as far as the markers you've got like triangular markers um, and you've got four printed numbers on the dial you've got the 12 index the three the six and the nine personally that is my favorite then on the uh, seconds the markers on the seconds if you notice it's like a railroad so I thought that was kind of kind of cool as you can tell looks like a railroad and then it's also got this brushed metal look. See, you can, at an angle, you can see like the um, vertical brush strokes. So I thought that was kind of cool. And it's got a patina on it as far as uh, the look of the markers and the hands. Have like an age vintage look. Um, has that yellowish orange look. So that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I love this dial. It's very, it's very classic. Um, as far as a crown, um, it's not a screw down crown, um, so I do not know how well it is. At, you know, it's water resistance, but it is rated at um, five atm or fifty meters. Um, now, as far as the case dimensions. So obviously the case is 316 stainless steel as well as the, the bracelet. Uh, the diameter is 41 millimeters. The thickness is between 11.2 and 11.5. The reason why I've got two different numbers because two different sources show two different numbers. So I'll just tell you what it's in between. Um, I do need to get one of those tools, I will say, to measure, and I will be getting those, or getting that tool pretty soon. That way I can uh, make these reviews a little bit more efficient, so I can measure it um, right there in front of y'all, instead of going by the information online. Lug width right here is uh, 20 millimeters. I've got some NATO straps on the way. I think this is going to look awesome with uh, these straps. If it's anything like... My old Seamaster uh, homage from a few years ago, it's going to look good on so many different uh, straps. So, but yeah, this strap is a brush stainless steel, 316L stainless steel with the safety class. I, this is my favorite type of class, by the way. Um, let me take it off of this holder right here so I can show you the case back. And here you go. It is a clear case back, which is my personal favorite. So you're going to see the seagull movement in the back. 
There's the rotor right there, the self wind in rotor. And you know, it is, to me, it, it fits pretty close to my wrist. It's kind of slim. I mean, considering that a lot of my watches are like 15 plus millimeters thickness, and this is uh, 11, so that is kind of nice. And quick rundown on the history of the original watch that this is paying homage to. Um, it's paying homage to an Omega Railmaster. It did debut in 1957, so it is an older style. Um, in 2018, Omega released two different versions of the Railmaster. They released a 60th anniversary, which looks a little different than this one. Um, and then they released, I guess, a standard edition, which would be this one. Um, so the reason behind this watch and the name and everything is this was originally made for uh, railroad workers, um, and in the railway system, you've got a lot of electrical or magnetic fields, and they needed something that would withhold um, all that abuse for the the movement inside. So I guess the magnetic fields uh, just do numbers on or do a number on uh, mechanical movements just kind of seizes it up and stuff like that. So this um, was made to withstand all that um, electrical field. Now the Rolex Milgauss is tested at a thousand Gauss. This originally was tested as a, at a thousand Gauss and you know, and at, you know, almost 60 years ago, that was pretty impressive. But in 2018 when Omega re-released the Railmaster, it was tested at 15,000 Gauss. So that is actually very impressive. Um, so that's just a brief rundown on the history. Maybe later down the road, I'll do like a comparison. I do not have an Omega Railmaster to compare, but I can just do like basic info as far as comparing things on the screen and stuff like that. If y'all are interested in that. Um, I am going to put it on wrist so y'all can see. And, oh, and one last thing so I don't forget. The crystal is sapphire glass. And as you can tell, it's flat. It's not domed. Uh, and for the case back, I believe it's mineral glass. But I do know it's sapphire for um, the front crystal. All right, well, let me pause this and then I will uh, put it on wrist. All right, so this is what it looks like on my six interest. Let me scoot this back a little bit. Uh, there were two strap options. There was a stainless steel and then there was a denim. And I feel like I always like to have a stainless steel with my watches just kind of as a base. So if I ever want to change it out, I've got something that will um, go right to it. Even though I'm going to be wearing NATO straps with this watch probably the majority of its life, or at least for the foreseeable future, it's still nice to have the original stainless steel braces. So for $3 more, and ended up getting the stainless steel uh, over the denim. Um, and I did pay $70 on an AliExpress sale, so that's pretty nice. Sub $100 watch, automatic movement, sapphire, crystal, display case back, and then a very cool vintage retro design, so yeah, definitely. Then obviously um, I will include um, footage in natural light and in third person. Yep, that's what it looks like on my wrist. And here is the loom test. Um, the the markers are actually very good. Um, the the triangular. Um, 
uh, indexes or indices, uh, those are okay, but you can definitely tell there's a difference between the minutes, hour, and seconds hand. Those are extremely bright. How long it lasts, uh, that'd be the question that I'd be able to answer in the comment section later um, once I wear this a little more. So anyway, guys, that's the review over the Courgette Railmaster. If you have uh, any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. Um, so like always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Anyway, guys, until the next one, see ya.